Hi everybody and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on a 2010 Subaru Forester Boxer Diesel. That's something you don't see every day. And this car was brought to me by another shop. The customer complaint is the engine light comes on, the DPF light comes on, and sometimes the DPF light starts flashing. The other shop told me they had several DPF codes and they decided to change out the DPF filter for a brand new one. Now this is the old one they replaced, but unfortunately this didn't fix their problems. Now since I know a lot of you guys are having trouble diagnosing DPF systems, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to diagnose this together. Now let's start our diagnosis by confirming the customer's complaint. We're inside the car, so let's start the engine and let's see if we can confirm the customer's complaint. And sure enough, we've got a check engine light and the DPF light is flashing. Customer complaint confirmed. The engine light was on and the DPF light was flashing. In the next step, we're gonna hook up our scan tool to see if there are any codes stored that can help us diagnose our problem. In this video, we'll be using the Autel MK908. The MK908 is one of Autel's more high-end professional scan tools. Now, if you're a professional technician, you probably already heard of this machine. So, if you're thinking about getting one, I wanted to let you know that Autel is having a great deal on this scan tool right now. I will leave a link in the description box to where I got it from that could save you hundreds of euros or dollars. I hooked up the scan tool, which has a Bluetooth connection, by the way, which is very convenient. The scan tool had no problem identifying this car. I went into the engine management system and we've got a code stored, the P1469, and the fault code description is DPF Limp Home Mode. DPF limp home mode. So we've got a code, we know it has something to do with the DPF, but it isn't very helpful, is it? Now I'm gonna give you two tips that will solve 99% of all your DPF problems. First tip, take a look at your temperature readings. A DPF filter usually has one or more temperature sensors. Select the data pit on your scan tool, leave the car running, and see if the temperature rises. A DPF can easily reach a few hundred degrees Celsius. Now, if one sensor stays way behind the other, you might have a problem with that sensor. Now, I just checked the temperature sensors of this DPF and there seems to be nothing wrong with them. The second and probably most important tip is take a look at the pressure readings. Over time, a DPF can get blocked by soot, ashes, or a combination of both. Now, when the back pressure gets too high, the system will flag a code. Now, this DPF has got a pressure differential sensor. That's a sensor that measures the difference in pressure between the front and the back of the DPF. Now, in general, we don't want a higher pressure difference than about 10 millibars at idle and about 50 millibars at 2500 RPM. Now, I can't see how the back pressure on this new clean DPF can be too high, but since we're not guessing but diagnosing, we need to check the fundamentals. In the next step, I'm going to start the car and raise the RPM to about 2500, while you guys take a look at the pressure data pit. Now, the pressure difference shouldn't exceed 50 millibars or 5 kilopascal.
we've got five kilopascals or 50 millibars of pressure drop at idle while it's supposed to be no more than 10 millibars. At 2500 RPM, we've got about 20 kilopascals or 200 millibars of pressure drop while it's supposed to be no more than 50 millibars. So we've got four times the amount of pressure. Now this could mean two things. Or our sensor is playing games with us and giving us a false reading, or this brand new DPF filter is actually blocked. Now the only way to find out is by hooking up a gauge and take a look at the actual pressures at the DPF. This is the new DPF that was installed and all I did so far is remove some heat shielding. Now as you can see this filter has got two temperature sensors. It also has got two pressure lines, one at the beginning and one at the back of the filter. Now these lines run to a pressure differential sensor that measures the difference in pressure between those two points. In order to find out the pressure drop across our DPF, first we have got to know the pressure behind the DPF. And that's basically the back pressure of the rest of the exhaust system. Well, I just did that. I hooked up the gauge to that line coming from the back of the DPF and I measured it about 2500 RPM and the back pressure was about 40 millibars. So in order to find out the pressure drop across our DPF, we have got to subtract that number from the reading that comes from the front of our DPF. So right now I'm hooking up my pressure gauge to the line coming from the front of the DPF. And I'm going to start the engine and you guys are going to take a look at the reading at 2500 RPM and find out if our sensor was actually lying to us or this new DPF is actually blocked. Pressure gauge was reading about 240 millibars at 2500 RPM. When we subtract the 40 millibars from behind the DPF, we've got a pressure difference of 200 millibars. And that's exactly what our scan tool was telling us. So there's nothing wrong with our pressure sensor. We actually have got too much back pressure in our brand spanking new DPF. So we're going to remove it, inspect it, and see if we can find anything wrong with it. Before we continue, we still need to pick a winner for the last video's giveaway. Now I've uploaded all the comments into the computer and we'll let the computer pick a random winner. And if your name shows up on the screen, please contact me through the email address in the description box of this video. And we'll make sure you get this fantastic Otosim Pro Master Kit by Ditex. Now I wouldn't want to miss mine, so we're going to send you a brand new one. And the winner is... David Prout. Congratulations, David. You are now the owner of an Autosim Pro Master Kit. I don't know where you're from, but we'll send the prize to wherever you live in the world. Now, don't forget to contact me and we'll make sure you get your prize as soon as possible. I removed the DPF and I noted this is not an original part. This is an aftermarket DPF. I called the other shop and they told me an original DPF for this car is 1800 euros and that's not even including tax or labor. And I've got to admit that's a lot of money for an older car. Now this one was only 500 euros and it looks like a fantastic deal if only this was any good. Well it isn't, so we're going to inspect it 
to see if we can find anything physically wrong with it. Now that the DPF is removed, we can clearly see the two pressure lines that run to the pressure differential sensor. We can also see one of the two temperature sensors and I removed the other one to get easier access to the bolt over here. We're going to visually inspect this DPF to see if we can find anything wrong with it. Now we can look directly into the filter from this side. I did and I can see nothing wrong with it. But I also know there is a chamber in between the filters where the pressure line is and where the temperature sensor sits. We also cannot look directly into the filter from this side, so I finally get to use my new inspection camera. In my career, I've worked with a lot of inspection cameras, and you probably agree with me when I tell you that none of them are really perfect. Some of them have poor battery life, others have poor visibility, a very thick camera, and for others you will need a laptop, which I think isn't very convenient in an automotive environment. But I recently got this one from Hobby Tools and I've got to admit, this one is pretty awesome. This tool was especially designed for the automotive industry. So it's got a very long, but very thin camera. It has got a standalone screen with recording function, a memory card, zoom function, you can spin the picture, you can dim the light, it has got a remote control, but the coolest feature of all is the remote controlled articulating camera. So if you're looking for one of the best automotive inspection tools out there, I will leave a link in the description box of this video. Let's start out by removing this pressure line. Now let's turn the camera on and have a look inside. When we have a look around in the filter, at first glance there doesn't seem to be any structural damage. But we can see this almost metallic looking material on the filter element. And if it's on the surface, it might just as well be inside the filter. We can also see this black almost sedent looking stuff that even seems to be blocking some of the holes. Now it isn't everywhere, but there is a decent amount of it. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure if this stuff is the cause of the high back pressure. And if you have the answer, please share it with us in the comment section of this video. At the back of the filter, I can't see anything really out of the ordinary. There seems to be no metallic or black stuff on the surface. On this side also no structural damage. Although we haven't found any major defects, still the back pressure of this DPF is way too high. If you think you know why, please share your thoughts in the comment box with the rest of us. We ordered a new DPF and this is also an aftermarket part, but the supplier promised me this one meets OE specifications. It wasn't as cheap as this one, but it's still well over 50% cheaper than the original part. Well, is it any good? We're about to find out because I'm gonna install it. And after that, we're gonna do some measurements again. I installed the new DPF and hopefully this one does meet OE specifications. We're about to find out because I'm gonna hook up the pressure gates again and hopefully we can stop that annoying DPF light from flashing. So I'm connecting the gates to the pressure line again. I'm gonna start the vehicle, raise the RPM to 2500 and hopefully that needle doesn't move too much. <laughs>
Now that was a major improvement. We did see the needle move a little bit, but that was actually the normal 40 millibar back pressure of the exhaust system. Now I wanna repeat this test one more time, but this time with the data pit on the scan tool again. Well, that certainly looks like a fix to me. I'm gonna clear the codes, reset the DPF filter, and after that, the moment of truth, I'm gonna start the car, and we will see if we get rid of that annoying flashing DPF light. There are some things that can be learned from this video. First of all, new doesn't always mean good. And second, aftermarket isn't always bad. There are some great aftermarket suppliers out there that manufacture parts up to OEM specifications and sometimes even better. In some cases, these aftermarket suppliers are actually also the suppliers of the original parts. If your DPF isn't damaged, but it needs to be replaced because it's blocked, consider getting it cleaned by a professional company. If it's cleaned in the right way, this can save you a lot of money and you can keep the original quality part. In our case, we couldn't use the original part anymore because the previous shop tried to remove the temperature sensors and because they were stuck, they used a grinder to remove them. Also keep in mind that a blocked DPF can be caused by another issue. I noticed that on this Forester, they recently replaced an intercooler hose. That was probably leaking, causing the mixture to get rich and the engine to heavily smoke. Over time, blocking the DPF up to the point it couldn't regenerate anymore. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more, please consider subscribing to my channel. And when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I post a new video. And remember, diagnose then, fixed it again. See you next time, guys. And sometimes the DPF light starts flashing. Now the other...